Thirty years after the moratorium on commercial whaling, the world's largest mammals are still on the endangered list. But pro-whaling countries want the rules to be relaxed. We'll take a look at the arguments on both sides. Plus, it's the most lucrative sport in the world. But can American football have the same success outside the United States? I'm Martin Stanford. This is Insight. Welcome to Insight. Pro and anti whaling nations have clashed this week over the 30 year moratorium on commercial whaling. At the International Whaling Commission meeting in Slovenia, Japan is calling for coastal communities to be allowed to resume small scale hunting. Japan continues to carry out whaling in the name of scientific research. But, as Insight's Ty Genright reports, anti whalers argue that is really a cover for commercial hunting. A warning to viewers, there are images of whales being killed in this report. They're the biggest creatures on Earth, and yet among the most endangered by humans. It's 30 years now since a moratorium was introduced on hunting whales, and yet it continues at the hands of those who either don't agree with or aren't bound by that law, or in the name of science. This is the Nishin Maru, Japan's biggest whaling ship, which does so, it says, for scientific purposes. These pictures of the boat and its blood-stained deck were captured two years ago by an animal rights group that confronts its activities. In 2014, the International Court of Justice ruled this is not scientifically justified but after a one-year hiatus, Japanese whalers are preparing to go and hunt again. The whales they catch will be carved up for human consumption. When the International Court of Justice ruled Japan's whaling was illegal, you know, we rejoiced. Um, the whales in the Southern Ocean had one year where they weren't, they weren't whaled. But unfortunately, Japan's um, redesigned their whaling program to sort of fit in with the ICJ ruling. The international moratorium against whaling came into effect in 1986. It does allow for so-called aboriginal subsistence whaling by indigenous communities. The latest data shows that more than 350 whales were killed in this way in 2014. Iceland and Norway did sign up but under formal protest and they killed almost 900 whales for commercial reasons that same year. Japan killed almost 200 whales in the name of science in 2014 before suspending activity because of the international court ruling. This year, Tokyo will allow for 333 whales to be hunted for research. Whale meat is um, something that's been pushed by um, certain government bodies in the whaling countries. So um, what we're finding really is it's like either individual companies such in Iceland, it's just one lone whaler who is supporting that whole industry, or in Japan, some sort of key political members are maybe pushing that agenda. But in reality, whale meat is really sort of a dying appetite in Japan, uh, Iceland and Norway. <laughs> But Japanese whalers have their own seaborne predators. Activists from the group Sea Shepherd have set out to disrupt their activities before. This year they're sending a powerful new vessel that can weather conditions in the Antarctic Ocean for longer, funded by European lotteries and built in the Turkish city of Antalya. Speaking from the Red Sea on its way to Australia, the Ocean Warriors captain told me why. Well, this year on our mission to the Antarctic, uh, like every year, we intend to do everything within our power uh, to enforce international law and world opinion against whaling. Um, we'll do everything we can do without injuring either ourselves or the whalers um, in every, every way we can to prevent whales from getting slaughtered, whatever it takes. What do you think this kind of direct action is the best way to deal with whaling? IWC has been meeting for 66 times now, every two years, and they've been meeting, started 70 years ago, we've banned whaling 30 years ago, 
and yet we still have whaling going on. So obviously political pressure and government action is just not doing the job and the only thing left then is uh, direct action. Activists have accused Japan of buying the votes of other whaling commission members in support of its positions. At the last IWC meeting, a majority of members voted to implement the ICJ's ruling. 35 said yes, 20 voted no. At their latest meeting, members are considering whether the Commission should review the way it monitors whaling for science. Harpoons are at the ready. The Japanese port of Ayukawa is preparing for the new whaling season. In some Japanese restaurants, whale is still offered as a delicacy. Much of the world's whale meat is exported here, even though consumption has fallen sharply. So you might wonder why the Japanese want to preserve this tradition. Some think it might be more about preserving an industry. Ty Genwright, reporting for Insight. Well, to discuss that further, I'm joined now by Fiona Harvey, who is an award-winning environmental journalist. And also with us is Philip Mansbridge, who's the UK director for the International Fund for Animal Welfare. Fiona, do you expect any radical decisions or many major changes to policy at the meeting this week? Well, the meeting finishes tomorrow, so there have already been a few smaller changes. Um, one of the big topics for discussion is allowing a bit more whaling to, to take place for the countries that, uh, that are already doing some whaling, despite the moratorium that was signed 30 years ago. Under what exceptions are they asking for, then? For instance, uh, Japan wants exceptions so that some of its communities would be allowed to resume whaling uh, to, for whale meat. Um, but other countries are concerned that, really, because Japan already does some whaling, which it says is for scientific uh, purposes, takes uh, roughly about 200 whales, I think, uh, a year for those purposes, um, that really those wheels could be used if, if, you know, if, if you have a, a real reason why people want to, to, to need wheel meat for some And the argument, Philip, I think, is that Japan isn't really doing this for scientific research, or they might be doing a bit, but actually it's commercial whaling under the guise of scientific research. That's completely true. I mean, it's, it's just dressed up as science. It, it's, we call it so-called scientific whaling. It's under, a, uh, it's under a special permit, but they've been whaling like this for many, many years. Uh, the science is deemed scientific by themselves, by their own country, and they set their own quotas. But the truth is there's not really any peer-reviewed papers. There's many ways you can do non-lethal research, which would be far more effective. It is just a guise for commercial whaling. Are the stocks in the Japanese waters that they use, and we saw the court case, I think, with the Australians. They go down into their marine waters, don't they? Um, are they sustainable in the sense, or are the J Japanese scientific whaling having an effect on sustainable numbers of whales? It's very likely they're having an effect. I mean, uh, since, even since the International Court of Justice ruling in 2014, it's last season they took 333 minke whales, of which 200 were pregnant. That's a significant amount for a protected species. And, you know, the, the whales migrate massive distances uh, into various territories. It's very hard to count the exact number of any whale, uh, but without doubt it's having an effect. It's not just the Japanese that the people who object to whaling criticise. The Norwegians have flouted the rules as well, haven't they? That's right. Norway also takes a much larger number than Japan uh, of whales, for, uh, which they say, again, for scientific purposes. Um, they use which... the same excuse, do they? <laughs> Yeah, I think you could, you could call it an excuse. Yeah, and Iceland, of course, uh, also is a whaling country. Um, then there are a few places around the world where there is a, a genuine reason for subsistence uh, whaling, but they are very small. That's on a very small scale, I think. Very yeah. small scale. You see, the other thing is about this is why should we be bothered? Let's look at it from a UK perspective. We're not a whaling nation. We don't eat whale meat in any measure. We um, used to. As a foodstuff. Yeah, OK, we used to. Well, we don't now. Why should we be bothered? Let them do what they want to do. Because whales are hugely important for the uh, ocean's ecosystem. Uh, for one thing, whales are endangered anyway. Um, and they are beautiful, beautiful mammals and unique 
uh, in the world and so we should want to, to protect them. But also in terms of the health of the whole of the ocean's ecosystem, whales, because they're sort of a, a top, one of the top predators in many ways, because they're, they're big, you know, <laughs> most of them, um, uh, and so they play a very important role in the ecosystem. And of course, the whaling is not the only threat that whales face. Because, for instance, we are filling the oceans with plastics um, and whales are ingesting these and we have actually found whales uh, dead with lots of plastic inside them. Um, and we're also polluting the oceans uh, in other ways and whales can also sometimes be bycatch for uh, other fishing and we're overfishing, which means that we are taking away some of the, Their food, the food source. Yeah. So, but in 30 you know, years of this, Philip, there's not a whaling police force, is there? I mean, the oceans are vast places, even the areas where the whales tend to concentrate, and there's nobody out there to stop any country doing what it wants to do, or is there? I mean, ultimately, one of the, the main uh, things to help with that was this International Court of Justice, which is really the highest law in the land. Uh, and they did rule that Japan's scientific whaling was not fit for purpose and it wasn't scientific. Yeah. The, tra the challenge is that but Japan has just carried on. They just um, carried on. And this is why we need tougher stances at this year's IWC. Uh, meeting to make to make changes so things like special permitting which is a scientific or so-called scientific whaling would have to go to a working group it couldn't just be deemed here's the paper we think it's fine and now we're going to have, have other countries on the working group apart from japan norway and iceland for Indeed. instance who would just rubber stamp any permission <laughs> we, totally. we presume we but it, this then tiptoes into global politics doesn't it i mean i've seen the russians have agreed with the japanese that they should be a more laissez-faire do what you want sort of attitude to this so then you start starting an argument with the Russians about whaling. I mean, I think it is. Well, it's a, it's a global organization. It's the International Whaling Commission. So uh, there's many, many uh, conventions like this as CITES, which, which is reasonably effective as a, as a trade balancing measure for endangered species generally. There's the Convention in Migratory Species. So there's many international conventions like this, and they can work if done properly. What about the court of public opinion? Do you think that nations around the world are more sympathetic to the idea that we do need to look after the oceans and we need to look after animals like the whale? Yes, I think that there has been enormous public pressure. I mean, it was public pressure that brought about the moratorium 30 years ago. Um, but that took a long time. That was years and years of, of campaigning. In the of it, wasn't it? Save the whales. Yes, that's right. Um, so, you know, it, it can be very slow. That's the problem. But a public opinion is changing in the countries, even in the whaling countries. Support for whaling is waning. And also, uh, a lot of the, the, whale, whale, the taste for whale meat uh, is disappearing as well. So a lot of the whale meat that is currently caught um, it's not even used for human consumption, it's used for pet food. You know, this is entirely unreasonable, and I think people are rightly outraged by that. Fiona Harvey, Philip Mansbridge, thank you both very much. Thank you. This is Insight, coming next, Huddle Up! American football crosses the Atlantic, but is it here to stay?